since I was little. It looks like it's fun. There's no coincidence since I come. There's no coincidence. I'm gonna die when I'm done. I ain't done yet. So maybe I'm crazy. Woo! So maybe I'm crazy. So maybe I'm crazy. Just like you. Let's go. So maybe I'm crazy. Maybe I'm crazy. So maybe I'm crazy. Just like you. Some people live for the fortune. Some people live just for the fame. Some people live for the power. Yeah, yeah. Some people live just to play the game. Some people think that the physical things defy. What's within? I've been there before, and that life's a bore, so full of the superficial. Some people want it all, but I don't want nothing at all. I'll search for a mountain Promises forever young oh. Some people need three dozen rolls yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the only way to prove you love them Hand me the world on a silver platter What good would it be? With no one to share and no one who truly cares for, for me. Some people want it all, and I don't want nothing at all. If it ain't you, baby, if I got it, you, baby. Some people want diamond rings, but I don't want everything. But everything means nothing.
part of the rain. I'd hate to look into those eyes and see you now to pain. Her hair reminds me of a warm, safe place where as a child I'd Welcome, everyone. The show will be starting soon. You guys can see two minutes down over there. We're uh, starting something new today, so I hope you guys enjoy. I'll see you guys in a bit. Hey, what up, man? Yellow. Yellow. <laughs> How are you feeling today? Oh, there's an echo. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Great. I'm good. I'm good. I'm we... kind of nervous. It's my first time to kind of stream. <laughs> it's all right. It's all right. Anyways, we're live. Um, welcome, weary travelers. Um, from all the spaces and whatnot. Um, hopefully tonight you guys can like have a seat, like grab a drink, do whatever you guys need to do, take a moment and rest yourselves. And hopefully you guys can get entertained by me, Vin. Um, I'm, I'm the one that owns the, the Twitch channel. <laughs> um, apart from that, you guys can see me in the tower, um, the tower doing other things like another day and et cetera, et cetera. And I'm also here joined with Shigu. Hey. How you doing? <laughs> <laughs> and and we are your local patrons you can say that right mm -hmm. yeah <laughs> we are your local patrons of the world walkers highway Ta -da. <laughs> okay so <laughs> we're gonna hide away from all of the trouble that the tower has in the past week it's been a roller coaster right yep so, yeah Here's your, your, your one safe haven. <laughs> I'm not sure because, because all of the admins are online right now asking us if we can really hide away. <laughs> I mean, technically we do have a lot of people hanging out at our hideaway. Right, I, right, right. I, I, I don't know if that's quite safe if we get that big, you know? <laughs> we might have to have like a, li like a, a seating limit. Maybe like only five covers. And we we send out invitations, <laughs> but no, no, no. It's cool. It's cool. This is everyone's hideaway, right? Okay. <laughs> so what do I have today? So, I don't know, Shigo. What's on our menu today? Okay. So let's take a look. Let's take a look, right? Okay. What do we have? 
Okay, so we have beginner's portal, right? Um, which is basically how we everybody kind of got started into D and D. Everybody has their own beginnings, their own kind of story. Uh, going into what it's like being that player, whether you're a combat-oriented player, a story-driven player, or a RP heavy, right? And then kind of how you, some of us became dungeon masters for the first time. What were our worries? How it felt like um, in general? And yeah, uh, if we have time, uh, how we kind of transitioned into being a DM. All right, and we got some like local wines for everyone after that, which is everything he has said. And if you guys stay long enough, and you guys get a little bit, um, you know happy enough to, to stay around for uh, some nice drinks uh we do have an ama segment um or aua i guess right because it's you and me <laughs> um later in the show so um before before I, we you know we start to sh- um our show uh i just wanted to say that, that uh thanks for everyone for coming by um, we kind of started this after, well, how, how did this idea come to, come to be? So we were talking around one of the voice channels, right? And we were saying that we were, we were actually randomly talking and then you kind of just said, why don't we kind of do this live for everyone, right? Because we're kind of covering topics about being a dungeon master, how it felt. Uh, to be that dungeon master in, in a kind of different world setting, right? And then we said, okay, why don't we do this for the tower? Um, kind of show everyone, uh, uh, everyone's in the same boat as the star, uh, everyone feels this way or that way, and then oof, we're here. <laughs> yeah, and here we are, um, randomly just put all together. I, th- I, th- I feel like if, if this hideaway was like IRL, right? It'd just be a bunch of like boxes and chairs and then the bar right. and like all the drinks are inside the boxes still <laughs> i think i think it i think that's how that's how we look like i think it's a bomb shelter kind of feel <laughs> yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, i would not want the mother of the abyss to kind of bump jump in right now and kind of listen into us so <laughs> yeah it, it, it's kind of so if you if you if you think about it right as as time passes on we're gonna slowly build this hideaway into a very nice bar you know maybe we both get fine we both finally have a nice uniform to put on on our avatars right <laughs> exactly. you know maybe we'll do like giveaways and <laughs> <laughs> this is still our soft opening guys um <laughs> we're gonna take our time and oh that- I- i'm seeing notes from the people like <laughs> voice is low oh yeah, yeah, yeah. okay I got it, I got it, I got it, I got it. You are pretty much maxed out on my side now. Okay. Yeah. Is that very good? How is that, everyone? Hmm. Well, I guess I'll have to be screaming for the night, so... <laughs> All right. All right. As, lo- as long as it's good, as long as you guys can all hear us and everything. And yeah, if any of the viewers tonight are on the tower, you guys can actually hear us um, in the chat and whatnot. Yeah. <laughs> uh, um, go ahead. If any of the viewers are in the chat tower, kind of feel free to join the World Walkers Hideaway. Uh, that's the World Walkers Hideaway voice channel, right? Please expect to be on mute. <laughs> as you join the voice channel here 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 and, and and just in case and just in case you guys feel left out i will be dropping our band <laughs> <laughs> i will be dropping the band so you guys can hear music as well and enjoy the night um before before we go on i believe we're gonna be doing this like what once a month mm-hmm. yeah likely once a month yeah uh with various topics uh we might release like a uh, kind of interest scenario for the people to kind of check on a topic sale so uh, okay alrighty then so let's get the show on the road all right 
so. Chigu. Mm. <laughs> How did you get into d and I, I believe that's what we're trying to go with, right? How did I get into d and Um... Well, so I... Uh, is kind of like a group of friends who... Like, there's just one friend that you have who's like, uh... Uh, would you like to try, like, uh, Dungeons and Dragons? This is very, um, very, very, uh, interesting, etc., etc., right? Mm -hmm. Starts off as a module of people, and there's this one friend who kind of invites you to come along and, um, brings extra dice with them and kind of teaches you, right? So that, that's how it happened for me. So I think it was about what, six, six years ago, um, that a friend kind of came in, uh, do you want to make a story, yada, yada, very mm -hmm. and wizard, and then you kind of get into it, right? And then, and then you start loving the story, and then, and then everything is history and hazy after, right? Mm -hmm. So, so it's kind of like that for me, and a lot of players, these days, I hear, um, they, they would say, okay, because I watched it on YouTube, right? I.e. Uh, Critical Role, I.e. Um, some other stream, uh, adventures, uh, adve yeah, yeah, yeah or adventures. <laughs> mm, mm, exactly, right? So, mm. so there's a lot of things that could get personally, me, trend, invite, and then, uh, and then I went for my first game. How many years ago was that? Six years ago, oh, it was six, years ago. six years ago, yeah. okay, yeah, it's not much. I, I think there are a lot more out there but six years ago feels like a long time for me i mean yeah i i personally think it is uh six six years especially in this day and age of D, &D right I, th I feel like you were there right as 5e started right uh no i, I was a 3.5 kid <laughs> oh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah i forgot about that i forgot like talk about that but like a, li like a little bit so i i started out in 0.5e so ev everyone in the town probably knows 5e for the majority right uh but it started out as a 3.5 thing where a lot of what you guys have right now everything is so much easier right mm -hmm. um like in the ancient days um you don't get your you don't get extra attacks until very much later on right so no things like that you don't get a subclass you have but in 3.5, you have 1,000 prestige classes, right? So the customization options are near infinite. Um, so there's that. Uh, and then I transitioned into, uh, which was a bit more recent for me, about maybe May, three years ago. Um, and yeah. Uh, new format. Very mm. confusing. Started off as just a bit of a player. And then transitioned into kind of like a dungeon map, right? Uh, but most of my settings actually have been very traditional fandoms, fantasy and or medieval. Uh, how about you, it's been How how did you kind of get into Dragon? D and D for me has been um, an interesting story. Actually, I've been wanting to play. I've been wanting to play D and D ever since I got into college. So I think yeah, almost like six years ago. But I didn't officially start until I got out of college. No, maybe seven years. I also may have played it when I was a kid, but I don't remember. All I remember is it was a Lord of the Rings themed game done by my English mm. teacher. But I never came back until I got older, like when the, once I got to college and Critical Role came out. So uh, yes, I'm a critter. Yes, I'm one of those guys <laughs> that came from that generation of D&D players. Right. Um, and my story was kind of different. Um, geek culture, D&D culture wasn't that big back then, right? It wasn't, it wasn't mainstream per se. Critters was not a big thing yet, you know. Um, the Dragonborn guy was still there. Um, but I don't know, man. I still wanted to play, and I fell into DMing. But we, we, we're gonna be we're gonna be talking about that later. <laughs> um, but but yeah, this this roller coaster of a ride called D and D is something that's been kind of personal to me for the longest time um 
and that's why i got into it that's why i fell in love with it it's it's my version yeah. of writing that i enjoy and that's why i enjoy that's why i'm in it and that's why it was my favorite first thing to do ever i mean i mean yeah and, and there's just something about you, you um kind of how's it when you these friends you meet right you mm. you kind of because it's like you know them from so many facets and lenses even how they play a different persona mm-hmm. so so some of the friends that i've made years ago are still very good um uh, so much so that we we built lore together we've had conversations together so mm-hmm. yeah um i think it's really together, right especially when you're kind of uh uh you're kind of that 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 person who really wants to write a story or mm-hmm. oh you may have to get a little bit closer to the mic um you got you got pretty far <laughs> far away for a bit all right all right i i will i will have to kind of shout a bit louder okay <laughs> <laughs> um but anyways um so i believe that's i believe like this, the story of like first in D D, right it's, it's such a very like wide scale of things and let's let's kind of like break that down a bit if i remember correctly when we talked and as you said earlier D D for you started as a player right yeah i started out as a player okay so um in that sense how how has that journey been before you ever entered as a dm hmm before I really entered as a DM, right? So, okay, so when you are a new player, it is shit confusing. Mm-hmm. When you just jump in, um, everyone says that it, it's it's fun. You just roll dice, you and then and then you kind of get into it. Right. It becomes a numbers game. <laughs> uh, it it feels so the first time that you get in, you will feel like there's a lot of math that has to happen, mm-hmm. right? And and if you really have a good dungeon master, right, that kind of, I was lucky enough to kind of have a kind of caring dungeon master who kind of uh, shows you the pace, right? Right. But um, there are other types of dungeon masters. I am guilty for this, where I kind of the fire and hope they survive um, <laughs> so that they learn. Right, right, right. Uh, a lot. It's a lot to take in, just from a numbers perspective. Um, and then there's the there's the concepts like uh, what can a what can a wizard do versus a sorcerer versus a cleric, versus a druid, right? And mm-hmm. I, I found and I I personally wanted to be a caster, right? Because you know, casters are cool. Exactly. I, I, I agree, a hundred percent. I am not saying for everyone who is listening on this. Show, that the martial classes are shit. I'm <laughs> just <laughs> personal preference in casters. Um, but it is actually confusing. Like, how many spell slots do you have? How many, how many, um, how many spells can you have prepared for a day, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, right? Mm-hmm. And all of that was overwhelming. Um, so much so that I feel like I, on my first game, it didn't really sink in for me until it was about the fifth game in my experience, right? Uh, fifth game, wherein I felt that, okay, I have a good handle on what the hell I can do, right? At that starting point, though, you you kind of look at the other players. You actually compare yourself to the other players. Okay, hey, hey, what are they saying? Uh, okay, they're doing a check. What mm-hmm. is that check? What is that save? What is that? So there's a lot to take in, right? So at least that's for me. It was uh, it wasn't so much of a difficult uh, learning curve, but I admit I had to get invested a bit more in the story to kind of understand what what I would do as my character and what my character mechanically mm-hmm. could kind of do. Does that make sense? So that, that kind of like opens up that that um, topic of types of players, doesn't it? Mm-hmm. And that that's something that I think Ooh, boy. No, no, we don't we don't have to dive in now. We can dive into it later. But I feel like that's something that's very important about, you know, player being a player, right? That's something that you realize like you said, maybe for you it was five games in. 
But for me, it took me a while to realize, it, uh, maybe a year actually, to realize the types of players that are really out there. And they actually change from place to place. Honestly. Um, but like, uh, go, going back to you, going back to you. Um, you said you got into um, being a player because, uh, not being a player, you got into the story side, you know, of D&D, right? Can you right. like elaborate about that a little bit? Okay. Um, so my first D&D experience was more from the, from a box module, right? So it was Faerun, mm -hmm. uh, as nearly everyone starts there anyway. Uh, but suddenly my, my, so I read, because I'm a, I'm a nerd that way. I read, like, <laughs> HB, and therefore I, I kind of look, I look at what, what these things are, what's the abyss, what's the, what is that, what are the nine... Uh, health, etc., etc., right? Mm -hmm. And some of it didn't fit what I knew during the time, right? And I was like, I, I kind of asked my DM, okay, so how does it work in your world? And he was like, no, because my world is homebrew. And okay, that that was the that was like the Pandora's box right there, homebrew. <laughs> that was right? the moment he got right? sucked in. <laughs> yes, you could do anything essentially, right? You can bend the rules of your world. Mm -hmm. um, and then, you know the funny thing? The first thing these players do, so different players will, and I, I knew this because I have, I had a best friend who kind of joined at the same time, right? Mm -hmm. And he would also kind of craft out his characters, but he wasn't as invested to your point of different players, right? Right, right. I was the player who was very lore, right? I would I would read up on the lore, I would ask about the lore, and I would do investigation checks, etc. in game to kind of check and get more feedback from the DM on how the world works. Mm -hmm. right? Meanwhile, my friend was interested in his magic, magic sword, which <laughs> is now plus whatever else number, right? right. <laughs> smack up. Yeah, so, so see, um, different goals for different players mm -hmm. and i assume at, at some point and as we transition in later right mm -hmm. different lenses for different dms right it mm -hmm. becomes a different story right i could tell the same story or i could play this character right? and i would play it differently if i gave this exact same character to you you'd probably play, play it differently right? oh, yeah. regardless of the same alignment because there's just a bit of that personality of the player invested to it mm -hmm. so how, how are you right so you came from a non-traditional dnd setting right you you went into kind of you skipped that phase of being a player and you actually just jumped into dungeon is that right yeah um so where you made your friends in um from dnd right i was the mm. opposite um, TLDR, um, my friends live all around the world. Um, so what happened is five, four, uh, six years ago, I decided that I wanted to play D and D, but the friends that I made in college did not come from that kind of culture, from that kind of geek culture. I mean, yes, some of them were gamers, but none of them were like, you know, board game players or um tabletop role-playing game play type players so i did the one thing that i knew <laughs> and i hit up all my old friends from my childhood right i actually hit up a few friends that i i, I guess i could consider them as my best friends um when i was around the ages of like 12 and I jumped into DMing because of them. Because I knew that at least they can play the game mm. and I can play mm. the game. Right? <laughs> um, and that's how I jumped into DMing. It, like, I completely skipped oh. playing like, as a player. Like, that's not, that's not, that's not for me. <laughs> Actually, even more so nowadays, I realize that me as a player, probably not always the best. But as a DM, it's something that I love. Is because it's like... For me, right, I can I come from a strong writing background growing up in high mm. school and whatnot. And D&D &D was writing, but interactive writing, collaborative writing. 
Mm. And that, okay, okay. It, that appeals to me more than writing a novel. And I kind of, kind of just got sucked into it, and that that was it. And like I started homebrew from day one. I, I, I have the, <laughs> I, I have the dungeon master's guide. I have the player's handbook. I have, yeah. I know where my player's handbook is. I haven't opened it in a while, but I have actually never touched my DM's handbook. Oh, Not once. Okay. All right, all right. <laughs> um, because he, here's the thing, right? I started. I played one game in Forgotten Realms. I I DM one game <laughs> from the Forgotten Realms, and it did not grow so well. <laughs> it okay. was it, um the because <laughs> the lore wasn't mine. It wasn't my world. It wasn't my homebrew stuff. It wasn't your story as well, right? Exactly. 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 Yeah. yeah. And I, I think. I think. Though your your kind of jumping into DM mode is, I think, a bit common as well. <laughs> when you have like a couple of five, say, okay, why don't we play D and D? Everyone looks at each other. Okay, who's gonna be? <laughs> yeah, I mean, <laughs> and then someone gets roped in, right? Uh, low key, this that's what started my one year and a half long campaign of eight players. Eight players constant eight players um yeah, off and on i think was nine or ten <laughs> but constant was eight i had eight players and that was just a challenge on its own and mind you this is the first time i've ever dm'd right <laughs> so they oh, got they, that's crazy like they got to witness my journey of figuring out that i'm a homebrew dm figuring out that you know what i don't want to live in Forgotten Realms universe or the material plane of that world. I prefer things like Eberron. But even then, Eberron wasn't my story. So I took Eberron. I took other worlds that I enjoy. Maybe like The Witcher, Dragon Age. And, mm. I, you know, I put those things together. And that's kind of like when I realized that... Um, how do you say this? Being a player being a dm they're they're actually very 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 different things I, um it's, it's, I, I, like in bottom line at the bottom at the end of the day it's kind of something that you always think that it's one and the same because you're both trying to enjoy the game mm. but the, the satisfaction is very different right yes i i think it's because the player has a different set of goals, right and the dm also has a different set of goals mm -hmm. but i think I think this is the, the beauty about um and, and players forget this and DMs forget this, right? And this is this is at the very core of the game. Uh, but it's never said, right? Mm -hmm. But the players think that the DM, right, really really controls everything everything that happens, right? Mm -hmm. Which is to some degree true. But if you actually think about it, the 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 players are actually co-writers of the story. Yes. And they forget this. Right? Always. <laughs> they forget that they are actually the co-writers of the story. And that whatever they do becomes part of that story. Mm -hmm. Right? And 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 so I think I think that's a good reminder to everyone on the stream, right? Um, as a player, you are actually helping write the epicness. Of the story right mm -hmm. whatever you do there becomes part of the story right when when you guys look at this x months x years down the line right you say oh yeah we did that right we mm -hmm. we, we helped that farmer etc etc and the dm actually might like the dm um also sometimes hey i actually have work for co-writers to this thing, right? So, kind of, kind of different lenses, right? Mm -hmm. Um, and then, but of course, because your players have a different, uh, there are kind of scuffles here and there. Yeah, of I, course. I don't know if you've experienced that. I've experienced that, where in one player is like, one player feels like the other one is being ham about things. One, one person is like, uh. Okay, I wanna do this. I wanna, right? So, 
so there are a lot of intricacies to being a DM. Mm -hmm. uh, but if we kind of focus on the first time you DM, right? Uh, how would you say you you? So so you said that you kind of DM for your friends for the first time. They saw your journey, right? Yeah. What was your kind of core struggle as a beginner DM? Ooh. I'll share kind of my thoughts after, right? But I had a different set of struggles. Um, I'm willing to bet you had a different set of struggles, so I, I'd like to take on it. Um. Who? Okay, okay. That, that's that's a really big thing because I had a lot of struggles, honestly. Like some of them I still carry over until today. Um. One of one of the smaller ones, I guess, would say I would say is, um, writing. <laughs> writing when 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 I transitioned into writing for D and D stories, writing for tabletop RPG stories, the world kind of like got upside down a little bit, because all of a sudden I got like culture shocked almost. Like, oh, why? I need to build this entire continent. I need to build this entire city. I need to build a government. I need to build this with that, blah, blah, blah. But you know, you, you, you kind of, you kind of forget that when you write for tabletop RPGs, D and D, the things you need to write about are the things they can touch, the things they can see, right? The things right. that are around them, but not, not, not the <laughs> stuff that they never get to start, not never get to feel right. They won't care about the lich that's all the way in another continent. That's for some reason, destroying the world. They're gonna care about the lich that's in their area, right? You know, raising the dead here and there, whatever. You know? right, right. <laughs> so that's one of the smaller struggles I had starting out. It was learning to go from a go, uh, learning that I need to start small scale rather than large scale. But right, let's say right. uh, um, a bigger struggle I have that I carry until now is that I'm not very mechanically driven. I guess you could say as a DM. Um, I do tend to waive a lot of rules in favor of the story, in favor of the, the the emotion that I'm trying to portray or, you know, give out to the players in in the moment. Um, I'm sure um, people of the the server, the tower server, have seen uh, have seen that um, my games are always having like these homebrew mechanics, either classless systems or you know um random um talent trees if you guys have made into the messenger stuff but like mechanics in general for me kind of take a back seat and that's actually like costed me a few things over the years starting from the beginning where my players would get angry because i made this bad call um like um someone actually mentioned that um, I, I was reading one of the chats, but someone someone mentioned that players are like lawyers while the DM is in the judge. <laughs> is the judge right? Okay. Right, right, and and, and and that's like really that's very true because I remember doing calling out uh, making some bad calls as a DM. Um, I remember doing some random D one hundred damage rolls just because I did not know how much um a certain spell damage did. You know, yeah. that was like in my early years, like my first three months as a DM. I remember like one of my players who's had, who has actually has, who actually has D&D &D experience. He would be like, yo, what the fuck? What the fuck just happened? Why is my player, my character dead? What the, where did that D100 come from? I'm like, I don't know, man. That's the story. <laughs> okay. All right. All right. All right. <laughs> all right. I, I have a story as well. Like I had a player who just went to the bathroom. And came back and his PC was dead. Oh my god, that's all my, uh, that was feel really <laughs> bad. And and it came to a point that some of my players already dreaded that okay, multi-attack. And therefore they would already panic. <laughs> uh -huh. <laughs> so I but but you, I had some similar struggles, but at the core of it, I felt like by doing all of the crappy mistakes over time. Right, mm -hmm. you kind of improve as a DM, right? Mm -hmm. You you kind of get that action of, um, like oh okay, I know that if I do, so I'm not gonna compute it or I'm not gonna do it. Okay, um, but you know what? My on my end, right? My struggle was very very and technical, right? Mm -hmm. It is actually fixing everyone's schedule for Ooh. our 
You're, yeah, I'm having PTSD just from hearing that. Oh my god. Fixing everyone's schedule for a run. Messaging people. Following up. Yes. Can you please? Are, are, are you? And, and, you know what, what the biggest one is? Mm-hmm. What is it? <laughs> when the cleric is the one for that session. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> when the, it's the cleric who's not available. And as a DM, you feel like you're gonna have to. There's a, there's a TPK around the corner, right? <laughs> yes. Right. So, uh, you guys are understand that you're about to face a boss. And then you take a look at the cleric, message the cleric, are you gonna make it? Uh, I don't think I can. And then. Well. <laughs> yeah. I feel like, I feel like pet peeves. DM pet peeves is a show on its own, honestly. Right? Oh man, like. Mm -hmm. Yeah, just... and you kind of call that one player out <laughs> for kind of not not being there when you piece of shit or something. <laughs> or you can give everyone else inspiration, but you know what? <laughs> but no, uh, uh, like, like I remember this is part of me DMing for the first time. The scheduling was not something I was ready for. Um, my players come from all over the world and, you know, different time zones. Some people are up at 1 a.m. just so they can play. Some some of us, you know, are are doing it while they're working. <laughs> and it's it, it was very insane. I was not ready for eight players from all around the world trying to figure out how we can play every week. Mm, uh, and right, right. me being, you know, the first time being, being a D&D, I'm always very nice. I'm like... Hey, yeah, let's um, we, we can make it happen. We can make it happen. What about this day? What about that day? You know, the scheduling kind of you know gets out of hand, and you like low key after a while burn out because of it. And that yeah, is true. that is very true. As a as a DM, I find that it, it's actually disheartening. Like when you kind of have a story to tell, and then you kind of. Uh, confirmation mm -hmm. and then suddenly nobody confirms or something right uh that is disheartening as a dm actually i'll be very honest right uh and then you only have two players uh in a game and then because you have just those two players right you have to cancel the whole thing right yeah so so there's kind of that kind of thing and scenario so i i don't know i think that was my main thing doing the schedule and i i hear that you kind of only on a much grander scale of annoyance i mean because uh, everyone was from different time zones <laughs> i mean hey, hey hey like like five years six years down the line now i only do games with four people max five if i'm happy you know <laughs> right but like when i man people get away or even i let myself you know get carried away when you dm for the first time the but, world is insane the everything <laughs> uh, you know yes yes and then there's this your first world that you fleshed out to the bone mm -hmm. right and your players only get to kind of see just a bit of it just a teeny tiny bit of what you kind of prepared right yeah so it's kind of um, before we continue, I actually not not even talking about DMing. Um, how was your transition? You you come from a player to DM transition. How how was that? Oh, huh. how does that work? Um, it was a very difficult thing because as a player, I was during the time. Yes, I was a nerd, mm -hmm. and therefore, I e I'm now the towers librarian, right? Um. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I really love the lore so much, players, such that when I turn M mode of things, right? Mm -hmm. uh, the only real lore wise, I was fine because I knew how, how these worked mm -hmm. and how, how I would work my world, right? My difficulty was where to get started with my story, right? Mm -hmm. um, is it going to be a cliche big bad? Is it gonna be a cliche, uh, um, uh, 
political maneuver and what is the story gonna be intrigue that political intrigue yes is it gonna be political intrigue is it gonna be a horror campaign is it right and then and then for my first kind of campaign because i didn't understand how to be a dm right mm -hmm. uh it was a smorgasbord of things it was totally unfocused um i would give plot hints here plot hints here etc etc plot development would go east and west at the same time oh, so, i hate that yeah so so now now i think that's the struggle of new dms right how do you point your players to the right direction without um kind of without kind of just derailing or railroading them into a single mm -hmm. right that is the struggle right there and that was true for me because uh i was split between trying to tell my own story uh, uh and at the same time leading them to a direction versus them trying to go a certain way that i was having difficulty with mm -hmm. right so that was the biggest transition right and then there were the personalities of the players right uh i won't say that i've had like the uh, i've had those players who are really into rule lawyering so which is one of the most difficult oh yeah have, yes that you have to um fix right because as a dm uh if you have one of your players kind of, it kind of gets confusing so yeah <laughs> like I don't know, man. Like I, that kind of stuff is very <laughs> um difficult as a first time DM, honestly. It is, it is. But but you have to contend with it to grow. Like that's the that's the honest reality about it. To be a good DM, you kind of have to you have to flow with your players, right? How how they kind of tell the story, you also have to weave the story that way. To some mm -hmm. degree, right? Because I, I go back to my first point a while ago. They're also co-writers, right? You're not the only one, right? So, so I think those were hard lessons at the start when you're you're trying to be that starter DM, right? Mm. Like trying to write your first world. Yeah, I, I don't know. Have you kind of had this scenario where, and you try to flesh out your whole world? But yeah, they only, and you kind of feel this. That oh, man, yeah. I have so many stories when it comes to that. So, one of the, my big, my, my one of my biggest mistakes as as being a first time DM, right, um, was my level of involvement, my level of investment. That's the best word of it, right? Um, my story, I hate it when I can't close the book. Where, you know, from for other DMs, maybe it's writing the world, but mine is writing the story. And I get very pet I get I get very peeved about when I can't close stories. And that is, mm, that is true. Yeah, I mean like I like my 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 first my first campaign, yes, it went on for a year and a half. Right? Um but at the same time, the the, story, the closing of that book um, was very rushed because one, I was experiencing my first DM burnout. Um, two, there were some other things that I, I could not keep up with because, again, first time DM. Um, and these are there's a, these are things that I can teach like later on in another another session, another session, another uh, show where we can talk about the problems and the things that we can fix about for DMing, but like, um, ah, sorry, it's like, it's, it's like a lot of like memories coming back. Like mm, the, st the way I closed that book was not very nice. Like coming, coming back to like what you were saying about, um, writing the world, right? Right. Um, when you can't, when, when, I, if I ever have that moment when I have a trouble, writing a story i always tend to how do you say this rush off no I, um it's very difficult 
<laughs> it's very it, it's very difficult to like put into words how you, how I feel when I get I don't I don't get close I don't get to close a book because I'm always very in, heavily invested in my stories. I uh, like you said players are also co-writers and that also means that I'm also very invested in my players. You know? <laughs> like I'm invested yeah. them in them as writers. Like I want you to make the story that we will remember for as long as we can. I mean I have some great memories from that long-term campaign. I remember people like um, one one of my players decided to launch himself off a cannon, you know, <laughs> towards a flying dragon. I'm like, you know what? Why not? Right. The, but I also in that same session, I have I have a player who decided to kill off his own character by jumping off an airship. You know, like there's like good sides, bad sides to all these you know writing stuff when it comes to dming as a you know dming for the first time and it's really hard to keep up and stuff like that mm -hmm. yeah i i kind of i kind of echo that like um sometimes the players become disinterested in certain things and mm. you kind of feel like you put in and it kind of just okay it hurts yeah it hurts like, it, it hurts, hurts. It, it just hurts um uh, but, um, I think that's also, like, the challenge of, uh, and this is gonna be a controversial topic, right? Mm -hmm. When, and maybe we can tackle this in probably another podcast, but when do you ask a player to step off the table? Ooh. Right? So there are scenarios where you have to ask a player to step off the table or get off uh please leave the table mm -hmm. right uh, of course it's not gonna be like oh okay, get the um it's it's likely gonna be a polite scenario where you, you take that player aside there is a method to it mm -hmm. um but where do you kind of as a dm draw that line right wherein wherein you you just have that you just have that scenario that it's this one player is no longer being conducive and is ruining the fun of the rest and therefore for the good of the realm right mm -hmm. you have to take that player out right and i think that that was the piece de resistance of my career as a dm the first time i actually had to tell a player to leave the table yeah right? i mean like I still kind of struggle with that. I'm, I'm, I come from a different background when it comes to DMing. Um, I don't DM to strangers very often. In fact, most of the times my players come from a very small player group, maybe ten people max. And then every time there's a new player, is usually someone is recommended or invited in. So I'm, I'm, the, I'm that supper club version of a DM, right? <laughs> um, um, but like there are those times when I have to learn. Like very in you know very difficult situations and how to tell someone to get off. But you know, in my recent experience, I think within the last two years, it's it's something that takes time to learn. Honestly, uh, like when to put your foot down, right? Um, because sometimes you can spiral out into things where um there are bad breakoffs, and you know it happens. You know that's that's the that's the cycle of D and D sometimes, right? Um, not all players stay, um, good or bad. But that is true. you know, and that's uh, that's something that's very important in another really you know, something that you need to think about when you're transitioning into a DM when you're doing mm -hmm. DMing for the first time. <laughs> you know, it's not all glitz and glamour. You are still yeah, dealing with a, people. A, you know, <laughs> it's, it, it's a it is personal. It is personal to you. The story is personal to you. The players are also playing their. It's kind of like yeah, uh, which leads me to kind of my next topic right mm -hmm. um how to mindset your players as a beginner dm on how to kind of help you with the story without railroading them into a single direction so right i, I think i, I want to say something really quick before you continue like about that like um there's something that you see online very often and that's talking about session zeros right you're talking about mindsets creating mindsets for players right yes session yeah. zeros okay session zero 
this is maybe a hot take on it, right? But a first time DM won't know the value of a session zero. That's true. You yeah. wouldn't do a session zero unless someone set but, it up. Like, like un unless, unless you already know, like you've already experienced a problem you, that you usually bring up in a future session zero, you won't know what are those problems in the session zero. You won't know what right. are the things you need to talk about in the session zero. Yeah, so so I always differentiate a session zero from a sync. Right? Mm -hmm. For me, a session zero is for the DM to kind of set up the world from a technical perspective with with the players, right? Mm -hmm. So it means um, when when you set up your session zero, you should, as a DM, you should be paired with your world background and what's the exact setting and your expectation on the theme, mm -hmm. right? Um, so that your players know, for example, if you are clearing dagger, right? Your players know that they're not supposed to take survival or something. Yeah. Right? They they can already tailor their character just a bit towards yeah. cloak and taking, dagger. Taking like an orc language in an elvish campaign, right? You know? Well, yeah, like, <laughs> yeah. Uh, this is a pure human campaign. What the hell are you doing with those languages? Yeah. So... So it, it becomes that kind of conversation, right? And and at, at the very start, so you have the character sheets, you, that is your chance as a DM to kind of facilitate and help their character sheets. Not mm -hmm. all your players will be um, beginner play, uh, experienced players. Some of them will be beginners, right? Um, which is why from a perspective of a DM on the ground, a session zero becomes your your chance to kind of frame, right? Mm -hmm. Which leads me to my next statement. But do do you want your because you don't want a cliche that they meet in a tavern each and every time, right? Mm -hmm. So and then then the sync comes in. Then you ask them to kind of can you talk amongst yourselves? How do you want to be as a band of heroes or whatever else mm -hmm. right marauders heroes raiders villains whatever else and then they kind of i find that by doing this it helps ease into the campaign yeah it, it definitely does um i feel like we come from two very different backgrounds which is great it's like for me i've always had the same players for the longest time three years four years the same players Different campaigns, different one shots, same players. So I've never actually had to do a session zero. I've never had to put the, you know, I never had to tell anyone what is the theme of my stuff. What is, you know, what is like just in general, what is, what are we doing in this campaign? And then sinks. That's another thing, right? I'm, I've always started my players telling them saying like, Hey, um, if you want to, um, you know, the, you know, do this do that let me help you let me let me try to create this little space for you to um let's say create a story like if uh if any of my old players are watching um it's it's like you you know when i say okay start a new campaign i'm always gonna give you like the how do you say it? An, an umbrella to work under right i'll be like okay so everyone is going to be Part of this orphanage or everyone is this a uh, form of a form of worker right and that's how i do my sinks it's very it's as much as it's mm, how do you say this it's more of a balance between dm and player versus full-on player i don't know if that's the best way to like picture it i but, think i think i get what you mean um hmm. it's also driven from a narrative standpoint yes well, on what is relative to the narrative right yeah so for example um if their background is an orc war band right but your narrative is as you said an orphanage right how you kind of have difficulty kind of fitting those two together right so mm. there, there are like gaps there but if you kind of give them that umbrella feel mm -hmm. uh, and then okay this is the space you're gonna have to play in right um the tricky part is not all players kind of can um, automatically adjust to that. Right. Uh, some players will resist. 
just because they come from a different background and perspective of things, mm -hmm, right? Mm -hmm. So, for example, um, okay, I, and then you kind of have that, no, okay, no, you can't because X, Y, Z, because X, Y, Z, right? Mm -hmm. And then that kind of drives a conversation that, you know what, like some campaigns are made to be kind of a bit more focused. So not all campaigns themselves are made the same as well. Mm -hmm. right? Yes. So some campaigns are a bit more focused. So it's narrative heavy, it's story heavy, it's feels heavy, and therefore you really have to focus or else the world is blue, right? Yeah. Um, but then there's a fun type as well that's pure do anything you want where it so so you see each each dm each campaign each player all different right and then you're a dm trying to kind of juggle all these things mm -hmm. around right? that is like the biggest problem like for beginner dms i think because all of these things they will learn as time progresses as they become a dm right yeah from the mechanical from just the mechanical scheduling to dealing with your players mm -hmm. to dealing with how your players interact with your campaign to getting your players to focus and not derail your campaign right so those uh, that's a mixed bag of things of things that could go wrong i right? f i feel like we just gave like the longest preview to like like one of their next podcasts for sure <laughs> like but like the, the umbrella of dming is so big and you did a great like wrap around a great um um compiling <laughs> like of what we just talked about like you know but you know being a first time dm it's it, there's a lot to it but at the same time you know i kind of miss having that blind you know step into things kind of <laughs> Well, well, there are other ways. Um, so, the Dungeons and Dragons Five E isn't format, right? But on my end, at least, I have been more of this format, the R twenty format, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and some of the in, in Babel, right? Some of the players have actually run a made RPG. Yeah, <laughs> right. Which is completely different. Totally different. Hundred percent right? different. Yes, uh, Fated Core. That's another format, right? Which is a bit more as well, right? Yeah, Fate Core. I have, uh, mm. mm -hmm. have you kind of handled any other format? Because I, I have, I, I have been a pure Dungeons and Dragons. You know, with my love for home brewing. I I've gone far down that rabbit hole, man. I, I, <laughs> City of Mist, Cyberpunk. Um, now I'm trying to look into Altered Carbon. Um, you know, there's there's so many systems out there. Exactly right. And now, like, barring my quote unquote responsibility that power, mm -hmm. um, I've actually now like, and it's hard. It is hard to think outside of your comfort zone of a Dungeons and Dragons. Mm -hmm. <laughs> My next campaign idea is like, uh, how about I create like a, a Netrunner kind of? I, I, I don't know if people here play Netrunner, right? But what if I create a Netrunner type of campaign? Like a Shadowrun, right? Is, yeah, so, yes. so the casters are hackers in a cyber network kind of scenario right? mm -hmm. how does that fit in firebolt magic missile <laughs> oh what? man there's a lot how of I... yeah how do i what the hell how do i fix that before i can announce it to the world right? oh okay i know that feeling i know that feeling <laughs> yeah, so, uh... and, and i still have like on your end like you could go into that classless um approach Mm -hmm. right and then on my end it's like okay so how do i figure out all of the tables that wizards of the coast used to already figure out for me or yeah i i 100 percent get you man like i always i jump in blind every time i, I create a new mechanic or i go do classless systems and stuff that's because like i have such a like big exposure to non D, &D systems 
right i my light got off, turned off but like yeah um like i have such a big exposure to non D D things that i kind of get carried away in creating new systems and it, it kind of you know sometimes you know fucks me over <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I mean, the, 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 this is something that we can like talk about <laughs> another time. Like, like whole, yeah, the, the, a whole new world. But like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I get you, right? Um, uh, but that's that's part of a transition, actually. If you think about it, that mm-hmm. is like stepping into being new all over again. Yeah. yeah. Right. It changes. The mechanics change. You are not the master you once knew you were yeah. and now you have to change you're, your perspective. I think it's like All your your DM philosophy changes as you as you grow as yes. a DM. Right? Yes. It, you also like the way you weave your story, the way you weave your players in and out of situations changes as you grow as a DM. And I, I think that's something like first time DMs need to keep in mind is like you may feel that uncertainty, that fear right now of DMing your first campaign or your first one shot. Right, like, like, don't worry. Your players are right there, right beside you. <laughs> you know, they're there to help you out and stuff like that. But like, you will grow after you do that first one shot. After you do that first session one of, of your yes. campaign, right? Yes, actually, yes, you will grow a lot. Um, I think that's why. Uh, okay, so I I don't speak for the falsies, right? Uh, mm-hmm. But I think. I think that's why uh, created as well, because it it sought to kind of provide a home to these players who actually wanted to just really have fun, jump in, have a home game, and kind of get schedules put together. <laughs> yeah. Right. So, um, so and and I think, uh, so. And and um, Vox knows this. Shout out to Vox, right, and Talis, who have been who have been really helpful to us players uh, mm-hmm. in the Arcana. Um, they've been really helpful in creating um, creating your character, your new, your absolutely new, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, definitely, definitely. I, I've I've yeah. been in one of those newbie um, one shots. So I was curious. Exactly. Right? <laughs> It is so. It is such a good one shot. If anyone who wants to kind of uh, jump into that, just contact your near palsy, right? Um, it has been. It's such a good way to kind of learn the game, mm-hmm. right? While still having some some sort of uh, narrative to it. So, so the that's kind of my wrap around there, right? Find if 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 you have friends, right? And I'm not saying it needs to be bad. Uh, it needs to be the tower, right? If you have friends who are interested in being a player, new to the game, being a DM, right? Find that one community or kind of circle of friends that you yes. have that will guide you. 100%. Right? Yes, that will guide you, right? Um, like, find that. Find that safe spot right there. Because... DMs will never admit it, or maybe some will. Like, but they do love their players. <laughs> I mean, I I always admit it. Even the ones that leave, yeah. I still love them. You know, they they still created yeah, you, memories. I I hold on to. Yes. So you love your players, actually, right? Because they helped you write your story. Yeah. I mean, like at the end of the day, I think like something that also is nice to keep in mind for other than growing that your DM mean career will grow, your player career will grow, is that. At the end of the day, D and D is a collaborative story. It won't run if it's just you. Exactly. Right. Yeah. <laughs> so it's a give and take. This give is a very. <laughs> on on, on <laughs> that note, I feel like I feel like we've been having like we have we've been talking about a lot of things about DMing, and I think we can bring those into future um, shows. Like let's not let's not show all overhand at the moment. Uh, or else we cut up for like a three day marathon on talking about D and D. But <laughs> like, <laughs> before we move on to the AMA, before we move on okay. to the AMA, I want to I want to do something kind of. We're taking it off the script. Um, okay. People at the tower. Um, it's kind of funny because what I'm what I'm what I'm thinking about in my head is like you and I are just like the owners of this hideaway. We're talking to each other, right? And then when you see when you look at chat, it's everyone that's inside the hideaway. Everyone is just like 
you know, chatting to each other, talking to each other, you know, like a real bar. <laughs> it's kind of cool. Agree. Yeah, agree. So, like, before before I go into AMA, um, I just want to ask people who are alive, the people who are hanging out the hideaway, right? Um, what is what? Ah, I think I think here, let's, let's 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 go down the list. Let's start one by one. Um, what is, what is the takeaway that you have from being a player? And don't worry, we'll be here. I'll be here watching both chats if anyone goes on Twitch as well. <laughs> okay, I'll I'll watch the cafe essentially. Yeah, yeah, yeah. but yeah. So like, what what okay. is the takeaway? What is the takeaway of you know being a player? Oh, we have a shout out though. Thank you for making the server admin. Right? <laughs> yeah, that, that's a big I one. Know is, what the hell is he right now? I don't know if Beyond Light is watching or maybe Supreme Darkness is watching. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Note it, note it, guys. Yeah, but but we're kind of asking you, uh, and, and we'll kind of take snippet off of the off of the chat, right? Mm -hmm. Um, what is your takeaway? Uh, what is kind of like. As a first-time player, how did you feel? As a first-time running a first your first ever one shot, how do you feel, right? Mm -hmm. um, how how did it feel for you? Was it crazy? Were you confused, right? So, right. Let's see. Let's see. I see lots of people typing. <laughs> Oh yeah, just transition to several people. All right, so I have on Twitch. Um, someone says, um, with a good gar uh, with a good garden, aka playgroup, there's nothing to do but grow. DM some players alike. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's got kind of true, right? <laughs> now the next challenge is finding that good garden. <laughs> Yeah, I mean the good the good garden's also hard to cultivate sometimes, but you know you love them all the same. <laughs> um, hey, Tyler one, Aurora, uh, plot goes out the window. Yes, always. <laughs> when always. Kind of derails it like okay, I will burn this town because you know. <laughs> okay, we we have another one. I technically didn't get to play my character because of an event in a cafe. So I played a pre-made character that I didn't prepare for, but it was fun because Monk. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm not sure. So, so for the people in the tower, right? You guys know me as like person who kind of creates surprise one shot in the voice channel. So yeah, go ahead and kind of I'll, I'll try to adapt whatever character you guys create. <laughs> But uh, yeah, like that's hard for a new kind of for a player to kind of shift to another mindset when they both. Yeah, man, you, you, you always see those stories about those players that build like five pages of you know background for the story, then all of a sudden they can't do it. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh, uh, but uh, I just want to bring up um, Renzo. Yeah, the, the the audio on Twitch is delayed because of latency stuff. That is normal on Twitch, and if you're in the Discord call, yeah, it's 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 gonna be like that sometimes. <laughs> All right. All right. What's okay, next? What's next? A few more messages. Uh, sleep. Uh, Potato says, "Sleeping song. I can lend you bubbles if you want to adopt." Okay. Um, I am ready to have a Hulk druid. <laughs> Why not? Yeah. All right. First time player from the hill. Um, not gonna lie, I was ultra confused the first time I joined an actual long term campaign. But my DM and group were super duper welcoming. I felt re relieved that I ended up with them, and bleh, with them, it's always fun. And now we're being, we've been running the campaign for almost half a year. Congrats! Like congratulations, in the hell. Like getting <laughs> getting past a month sometimes, you know, nowadays is very difficult. Honestly. <laughs> oh yeah, it, yeah. Is, it is. But you know, again, good gardens. Could exactly definitely will grow right um oh we have one from zach again my first game and first derail uh 
Uh, we were supposed to, do, to go this to this basement thingy. Then we went and robbed the tavern and used its storage as an interrogation room. <laughs> yes. Yes. Then went to the cemetery and ritual was done without interventions. Yep. He just he completely he skipped everything. <laughs> <Yeah>. Translated <laughs> as the things you basically do as a player. Yeah. And the things you have to deal with as the DM. Oh my god. Okay. You know, you know. Sometimes, like skipping the story is another story that may or may not win. But you know, it's still the story, anyways. <laughs> <laughs> the problem is, as a DM, you might not be prepared. For you're, no, no, you're, you're never prepared as a DM. Okay. <laughs> like, you look at the players, guys. I do not have a map for this. <laughs> oh yeah, that, that's, that's like low key. That's why I don't use maps anymore because my players like to have fights in random alleyways. All right, what's next? What's next? From Blue, our resident kitty cat. Um, as a first-time player, I played a supposedly charismatic sorcerer, someone who is definitely not who I am IRL. Well, I can feel that, dude. Um, I still have some difficulty playing him, but I'm easing into the role as the session goes forward. Um, oh, Blue. <laughs> yo, I played my first bard recently, okay? Like, I understand how it feels. <laughs> like, okay, my online persona is very, like, you know... Um, forward, I guess you could say. Like, um, I I like to make jokes, but like IRL, dude, I am, I do not talk a lot unless you unless you're like one of my close friends. I do not talk a lot, but like, I understand that struggle of trying to play a charismatic player, uh, a charismatic character, but you, like, there's a there's, there's like some form of difficulty in trying to bring it out. But yeah, dude, like as as you keep on going forward, dude, it's doesn't come natural you can also like oh. watch movies or something uh, that's true that's true <laughs> but you know like um oh and we have it so okay like sometimes when you have to play a character you have to just internalize the whole thing yeah which does not translate to, do not do not approach everyone in real life and try the charisma check on everyone <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right, we have one from Vox. Um, shout out to one of the foul seas, right? I was a tiefling wizard. I bickered a lot in character and out of character with my playgroup, and it was fun. I, I guess that's part of the journey. <laughs> like, it you take it offline and just, just... If you had just done this, right? Yeah, like, like, here's like the fun thing, right? Um, For me, I enjoy that. I enjoy when... There's a lot of bickering and not like, like positive bickering, not negative bickering <laughs> at the table, right? I, I do run like heavy RP games, but I do not expect you to <laughs> to be serious 24-7. Like, I want those inside jokes, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Agreed. It's kind of fun. Thanks for everyone's picking up the, the format, by the way. Or else it's been impossible for us to, to, <laughs> to find these. Oh. Uh, first time player from Potato made a seven foot hulking tiefling druid who supposedly doesn't speak. Struggles with monster. Gr oh, for the people who have created characters with accents and monster growl. Good luck. <laughs> Good luck. Good luck to your. Good luck to your voice. Um, yeah. you, you like honestly, you're not the only one. Uh, as a DM, I've been ta I've taken a liking to creating mute characters, blind characters. You know, it's it gets difficult sometimes, <laughs> and yeah, but as a DM, it's kind of easy. All you have to do is uh, you just make a you know persuasion check. I'll just tell you what happened, or like a charismatic like this charisma check in general, or insight check, right? Right, right, right. <laughs> um, all right, Archon, my first game played a wild magic uh, sorcerer because it seemed fun. Died in session two because of wild, mag wild magic <laughs> sorcerers. <laughs> okay, wild magic. <laughs> This, you, okay, this is how my magic source is. You are a caster who basically every time you cast a spell, right? You give the you blindfold your DM and tell him to throw a dart. <laughs> well, my magic source have a special place in my heart. Ian. Yes. <laughs> there are times where I do forget to ask you to look at that t table, but you know, I still. It's it's a it's a I don't know it's a love it's a love story. I was about to say love and hate, but no, I just sometimes forget <laughs> to ask about the table. <laughs> okay. 
<laughs> uh, we have one from the Flying Dutchman, right? Got sent to a level 8 campaign and didn't know what I was doing. Died on the first session. R.I.P. Hadrick the Fighter. Uh, shout out to Hadrick the Fighter. Uh, thoughts and prayers, yeah. Hadrick. Yeah, our thoughts and prayers. Um, yeah, I suppose when you're a new... Right, when, um, and you suddenly get sucked into a high-level campaign. You're just, what? Wait, what? Dude... <laughs> I, I jumped into a level 20 campaign, I think, this year for the first time. I've never DM'd level 20, never done, um, never played oh, as a... Epic level. Yeah, like, but I realize it's not uh, not that different from a level 10 player, a uh, level 10 character. However, if you're a wizard, good luck, you know? <laughs> it's a different story if you're a wizard. I know. <laughs> Wild Magic Surge okay. is the best ability. Uh, yes, it is. <laughs> why not? Why not, why, why not? not? As a player, most of my PCs, PCs are different personalities I have. Yeah, that's actually one of the like, philosophies that come from like uh, players. Um, I come from one of that. Um, I do curate players based on different personalities that I can kind of group together. So I can do some sort of char charismatic character. I can do some kind of edgelord, you know? <laughs> edgelord. <laughs> yeah. And sometimes I do it based on accents I can do. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, I, I kinda wrap before I do it. Like I've kinda created a couple uh I think some of the tower residents hate some of them, so <laughs> 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 Alright, uh we have uh from the first artisan. Shout out to the first artisan of the tower, right? My first game was actually Mama Vox's Mama Vox. <laughs> Earth campaign, and I'm really because I have to talk, which was not good at the moment because I was coughing. Oh, no, man. Fine. Yeah, yeah that, that is difficult, but I think your DM definitely appreciates the effort, right? Mm -hmm. Always. Okay. All right. Man. Okay, like so we will take just a few more, I guess. Yeah, before okay. we go to the AMA, yeah. Okay, so last one, I guess. Uh, I feel like my IRL seeps through all my PCs. Not really sure, but ha ha ha. My characters are always a certain level of dumb uh, from nothingness, right? Uh, <laughs> I didn't mean to laugh. I didn't mean to laugh. <laughs> um, <laughs> oh, okay. I, I don't want to take this one because I'm for the RP. Um, but I, I don't think, uh, I don't think like our personalities, like, we can't avoid that our personalities seep into characters, mm -hmm. our real personalities, and and how we really function, right? And that's what kind of makes your character unique. I wouldn't say it's like being dumb. <laughs> it's more of it. It kind of adds. You, you, you know, it was kind of funny. Like, 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 I can't roleplay smart characters. It's hard. It's really hard. <laughs> <laughs> it's like that I cannot be, be Sherlock. I will always be Watson. <laughs> that should be one of our topics in the future, right? How do you properly play a character that has an in five? <laughs> <laughs> or i.e. anything any other stuff. We'll talk about that later. Um Okay. I think that is it. Yeah. Guys, thank you so oh, much. How about AMA? Oh yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll transition into AMA. So this is our official question and answer portion. So mm -hmm. we will just let everything sink in, right? So we will now transition to the text channel World Walkers Hideaway, yeah. right? Uh, yes. So we'll take for the next how many minutes do you have, uh, Vin? Let's say ten. Or okay. do our best to do ten. <laughs> okay. So we will take. Hopefully, no violent reactions. It's a pretty, pretty kind of basement level hideaway. <laughs> we barely have enough alcohol for everyone. <laughs> we cannot afford a tavern brawl right now. It is still a soft opening, guys. <laughs> yes. We are not ready. Not... Yes. This is actually my first time bartendering, right? Shout out to. Alfie and Caleb, who kind of do this shit most of the time in our cafe. <laughs> <laughs> I 
I, I think we're more like owners at this point. We we yeah, are owners, so. chefs, uh, bartenders, waiters, everything in between. Everything in between, right? Okay, so we'll wait at the the World Wide Away channel. Questions regarding the stream, being a DM, your first time experiences, etc., etc. Yeah, I I just want to say uh, thanks for all the stories. I actually really enjoy them. <laughs> If Vin and she could do it, uh, IRL could do it, who would they throw spaghetti at? Uh, uh, how do we handle this question? <laughs> God damn it, duality. Um, I would throw my spaghetti at the outer gods. No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I do not want to get bombed right you're, now. You're about to get uh, smited, dude. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I would, I would throw it at, like, I would serve Box the spaghetti because of all the effort she does in welcoming the new I'd serve it to Box. I, I'll, I'll chop it up and use it as confetti and throw it at Vox as well, I guess. <laughs> Sorry, okay, Vox. Okay, here. <laughs> Here we go. The crib is waiting. I can see the other crap. Uh, <laughs> all right. Um. You want those? Okay. All right. Um. How do you encourage new players to get into RP, especially when they're nervous or shy or a bit hesitant? Oh. Hmm. You're gonna have to ease them into it. So, uh, high, high RP situations will not be good for them at the start. You have to ease them to just talking to the goddamn bar the bartender or the innkeep first. So, simple things like that. Mm -hmm. Until you can kind of get them into, uh, into, into really kind of getting invested in, in each of their characters. Uh, another thing could be that you have them interact with their party a bit more right uh, uh there's this one player who can facilitate that and as a dm you can you can kind of make that conversation happen between them right yeah i think it's a lot of like feeling the room right um yeah um yeah, exactly getting new players to get into rp is it's fun but also um you got to be skilled at doing it um honestly like not everyone kind of <laughs> Like I've been in some, um, I've been in some groups where DMs are having trouble bringing out the RP from someone, uh, some people. But then again, you have to realize that not all players are for RP. You know, not all groups need to have everyone who's heavily into RP. Maybe you actually think you lean more to the combat side or the in in investigation side. But that, that's, that's like a, like a different story, you know. <laughs> but like, <laughs> yeah, um, just just in general, um. There's many ways to encourage a player into be into RP, using NPCs, using other players, um, asking lots of questions. You know, it'll, it'll take. It just takes time. Okay. All right. Oh wait, can we ask joke questions? Ah, uh, we don't mind. I don't mind. Um. <laughs> yeah, I don't. That's <laughs> <so> right. <laughs> Next question. How do you deal with balancing, especially with very, oh, tricky, tricky bonked? Because you have to, if you're homebrewing, you, so, so you guys have to realize that Wizard Coast has a full team to kind of play test these things, right? What you would be doing is eyeballing. Right? <laughs> yes. Um, so expect, expect that either one, one part of whatever you homebrew is OP and the other part is totally weak, right? It will not always be balanced. Mm -hmm. but you refine from there so just try it out um to the best of your ability and just you know do a play test with a couple of players yeah i don't think players would mind like have vox post uh something saying you know what uh, i'm looking for play testers for my custom blah blah blah, blah or homebrew mm -hmm. right? we'll run one shot only or something. that should be enough yeah like um, for me um the easy, the easy answer is experience. Experience is gonna help you balance, um, understanding how D and D works. If you're, if you're like me who does overhauls of D and D systems, uh, right. understanding how D and D damage systems work, stuff like that. That's very important. But in the end of the day, 
um you have to remember that if you're gonna homebrew a uh, homebrew a system just for like a one shot or homebrew a system for a very short campaign you have to remember that you are doing it for the story versus you know the, the system unless it's something you want to really build for the long-term thing which i'm doing personally on the messenger you guys can catch me every other week now for the messenger but like um yeah homebrew systems is is a big umbrella well we can talk about it some another podcast on like elaborate on it mm-hmm. uh, i agree like how do you do your custom homebrew yeah um okay how do you deal with random creative ideas that characters backstory right uh multiple ways uh you could talk to that player first uh i assume this is kind of like as a dm you could talk to that player first and kind of ask how they want to grow their character right mm-hmm. what what is their kind of driver for their character right and and it could be that kind of conversation with a player so that's kind of a short answer to it right so that you kind of uh, kind of zoom in because you're likely gonna have a lot of creative hit that player with, but it should actually tie into how the player also wants to grow that particular character, right? Mm-hmm. Because otherwise they might not respond to the stimulus. Um, my end quick answer, um, for if if you're doing it from a DM perspective for a long run campaign, um, write write it out, write write all your ideas out and see the value in it for your story. If there, if there's not, if it does not give value to your story, do not use it. Um, specific character backstories, like uh, Shiko said, it's something you have to talk to your player. You know, you, um, it's something that you have to talk to your DM actually also. You know, you have to figure that, that that stuff out. Um, so what's the best tip you can give to a very new player? Mm. I have to go back to find that. <laughs> find that circle who will kind of accept you <laughs> for the shit you do yeah um uh, yeah. I, that, that's, that's definitely a really good tip like find find a community exactly. that will welcome new players because not exactly. all dms are very newbie friendly yeah, <laughs> talus hi you're the right. best uh um um, <laughs> um but like you know um <laughs> sorry um the, for me best tip for a new player is the the player handbook is big. The player handbook is very big. Google like a cheat sheet. Maybe that will help you. That's like maybe one good tip I can give to a new player. Because if you're like me and reading is hard because you have dyslexia, um, <laughs> you know, find cheat sheets. Yeah, my end, just jump in. Yeah. Jump in. Because the time you read the PHB, is better time hanging out with your friends and jump in. Yeah, exactly. Go ahead. Jump uh, in. What advice would you give for aspiring DMs, especially when they they do start planning their campaigns? Do oh. not write everything. Do uh, not write everything. <laughs> literally, I was about to say the same thing. Like, if you write everything, you'll never DM your first campaign. I and I we've, we've talked about this, Mizu. I've to, I've told you, it's like write what's valuable to your players. You know, um, don't write everything or else you'll get caught up in a cycle of writing your world and you'll never actually get to play it. You'll never get to share your story. I think that's a better way to put it. Right, right. Agreed. Um, okay. Mm-hmm. We have the next one. How Let's... do you advise players using the wish? <laughs> okay. You want to take this one? <laughs> uh... You go first, because I don't have that. Actually, because of my homebrew um, system ways, I do not have a lot of games of high-ranking spells. Okay. So, the infamous wish spell, right? Uh, you have to remind yourself that the wish spell, despite being a reality thing spell, right, is still limited by the power of the player character. If the assumption is uh, your world can only reach a certain power level, right? And therefore, you kind of decide what, at what level does your the wish affect. If the wish in itself affects your whole world, for example, if a player wished that 
can I remove all of air into your from your world or all fire snuff snuff all fire out in your world, right? Like that's not likely gonna fly. You're just gonna have to baseline on hat at, at what power level. Pick a power level. Is it at the town, at the city, at the country level that it can affect? And then go from there. And then zoom in. Okay. Alright, next one. Okay. If you could have a cantrip in real life, what would it be? And what would you use it for? Okay. There's so many choices. <laughs> uh, I would probably take prestidigitation. I was about so to say the same thing. I could, yeah. I would prestidigitate myself clean while in a grab going to work or something. Yeah. You, you ever get like that one spill that you need to get off, right? <laughs> prestidigitation will take care of it. Yes, exactly. <laughs> okay, so and then, uh, what advice? What can you advise on making homebrew spells? Oh, uh, we're that is a long conversation, Zach. So uh, I'll save it for another kind of. We can kind of park it for now, mm -hmm. but it's the same as the question that Bonk Blue kind of asked. You kind of have to try it out, right? On what you want it to achieve before you can kind of figure out how to balance it out. Conceptualize, uh, adapt, and execute. Yes. <laughs> and then you have to check as well because they exist only in a different form or it's very close to it, right? Mm -hmm. So you might want to adapt that and re-template it from that. Okay. And this is our last question for tonight um today rather um before we kind of get into the inspiration giveaway apparently mm -hmm. <laughs> if you were to be a class in real life why would it what would it be and why oh hmm. Ooh, sorcerer is pretty high up there <laughs> uh, hmm. Hmm. Okay, if this was a monster question, I'd have an easy answer, but I would probably say... I would still... I would definitely still be a bard. Aw, that's nice. Just um, because... Yeah, Martin, that's like... I think that's, that, that already is a IRL class. <laughs> yeah, like, I would definitely be a bard. <laughs> In either case. Yeah, um, for me... I want to say sorcerer. Um, but like, be a humble sorcerer. Like, don't tell anyone. <laughs> don't show anyone. Okay. Something is happening, and um, all I'm seeing is a in Street Pop Cafe. I'm having having a mental breakdown right now. <laughs> Can you guys not? <laughs> <laughs> oh, they're all, are they asking you to sing? Uh, no, I don't. Think, I don't. Think that's what they they mean, right? I I. Probably something else altogether. They wanna... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, um... Thank you all for all the questions. It was actually a great time. Um, and everything. Alright. And now we will ask the kinda... What's it? Uh, one inspiration giveaway. Mm -hmm. Right? Uh, and I will watch the World Walkers Hideaway for the answer. Okay? I will not watch Street Talk Cafe for the answer. So, uh, the first one to type it in, I guess. Okay. So the question is, according to the Street Talk Cafe's RP, right? Or Babel, or, or rather, of Babel Lore, what is the full name of admin's cat form? It has to be the full name, apparently. <laughs> so, FYI. <laughs> it has to be the full name. Uh, according to Vox, it has to be with the role. <laughs> wow. Okay. Yeah, 
you know this is like this is the perfect moment to have our 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 uh, i guess for you quote unquote monkey he can be our uh, mascot <laughs> he can be our sponsor and mascot at the same time uh, still no uh, <laughs> okay so we have a winner so it is cosmos teleform which is the full name of uh, the cat form of the admin, right? Congrats! So, yes, he'll get the one inspiration. Uh, I assume that I just need to tell Vox this, right? Okay. <laughs> don't worry, she's <laughs> watching know, us. <laughs> we'll have to de deal with it offline. Okay. Yeah. All right. I guess okay, that's all the time we have for today. That is all the time that we have for today. All right, so um, I just want to say on behalf of Chigu and I, thanks for making our first episode, our first session, the first opening of the world, um, World Walkers Hideaway, extremely fun. Um, for anyone who is not in the server yet, do contact uh, DM Rachel Troy, hashtag six eight three eight. And call now and you get a um, 5% discount on. No, but like, um, hit her up and join the tower. And hopefully, you can join us at the next AMA, next story time, or whatever. You know, hang out, play some games, um, do some DMing, uh, or anything on us under the shadow. Uh oh, shadow umbrella. <laughs> All right. And shout out to the <laughs> shout out to the players. Uh, in and out of the tower, right? Good garden to kind of play. We will be here. And, uh, just please. <laughs> please, um, okay. Alright, and that's all the time we have for today. It's been, <laughs> we have to wrap up. <laughs> yeah, right, we're wrapping it up. Um, everyone get the F out of our, um, bar. <laughs> um, right. we are done for today. We are out of drinks. We are out of everything. We'll catch you next time on... What date? <laughs> okay. All right. See you guys. Bye. Bye. We can talk about date some other time. Yeah. <laughs>